Darting low over the Alaskan glaciers, fjords, and mountains at speeds greater than 300 miles an hour, 10 pilots for the last eight years have been flying to Alaska together. Hot rods in the most literal sense, these retired fighter pilots are still pushing the aviation envelope today. With a combined aviation experience of more than 500 years, they are the best of America's best. Their numbers include fighter pilots with over 500 combat missions collectively, former instructors at the United States Air Force Test Pilot School, the former Deputy Commandant of the United States Air Force Fighter Weapons School, Top Gun, and Reno Air Race competitors. Best lifelong friends, they continue the pursuit of aviation excellence in their self-built, high-performance experimental aircraft. Theirs is the story of exceptional men whose passion for flight came of age when airplanes became hot. And in their prime, these pilots broke the speed barrier with the nonchalance of a Sunday stroll in the park. They engaged in dogfights with the finest pilots on earth and strapped to ejection seats. They risked their lives testing innovative ideas from design engineers at Lockheed and Boeing who dedicated their life to build the finest fighters in the world. This quintessential band of brothers joins the community of colorful Alaskan bush pilots that we've met over the years to soar over the mountains. The airplanes include eight SX-300s and two Questair Ventures, all of which were hand-built, many of which were built by the pilots themselves. Now in their mid-70s, the leaders of this group are still pushing the envelope, leading the way. You can stay at home and sit in front of the TV, or you can get out in the world and enjoy it. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> we're out here. The leaders of the expedition were Tuck McAtee and Keith Phillips, both of whom were combat veterans of Vietnam, collectively with over 500 missions in Vietnam. Both Tuck and Keith were instructors at the United States Air Force Fighter Weapons School, Top Gun. And Jim Cianci. A Vietnam combat veteran having flown both the A-4E Skyhawk and A-7E Corsair II for a total of 155 combat missions. And Jim Vitale. Jim's airline career started with Pan Am in 1968 and spanned 37 years in eight other airlines, foreign and U.S., with over 20,000 flight hours. Mike Smith, the youngest of the crew and Mississippi's finest pilot. Jerry Mercer was the Budweiser Air Show demo pilot in the BD-5J. Jerry also set seven national and six world records in the BD-5J. He received his airline transport rating at the age of 21 and has over 21,000 hours in 150 different makes and models of aircraft. Marty Abbott, one of the Royal Canadian Air Force's finest F-104 pilots, now the world's finest turbine legend pilot flying his incredible plane with a 1200 horsepower Garrett engine. John Wilson, a master builder that just completed a beautiful SX-300 that has won significant awards. Heinz Peer, a Swiss citizen that has circumnavigated the world in his SX-300. And Tony Crawford, who built his Quest Air Venture. We are here. We're going to take off and head basically west over the hills. I'll climb up whatever we can. If it looks like we won't have any problem. Uh, and we'll just go straight west until we hit the coast, come up to Nanit... What is that? Nanit... 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 Lake. And that we'll just kind of cruise there and take a look at it. It'd be kind of, kind of pretty, I guess. And then we'll just head almost straight north. Pretty much. Weather up there, there are some buildups. Most of the weather is up north. You know, it's pretty it's not too bad down here, but there are some buildups, so we'll try to avoid those. A little bit of rain that will not fly faster than 170 miles if you go through any kind of rain showers. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Me too. So it's well it's rain All right. All right, okay. We'll do it that way then. Red flight of four, take an active runway one one. Okay, we'll be departing to the west.
we're going to uh, go on top. We're going to have to find a hole to penetrate, though, before we get up north or get up uh, west where they uh, very solid over there. The spirit of aviation is a good example of exactly what made America great. And nowhere better than Alaska exemplifies the spirit that makes America great. Here in Alaska, where there are adventurers and explorers still on the move today, charting territory that no one has ever seen before, it is an incredible experience. We got plenty of gas. We got plenty of time. So this is just for having fun. And then when we get out here, it, this whole thing is pretty big. It's huge. Huge. So huge. It's not pretty big. Um, <laughs> ginormous. It's ginormous. It's ginormous. <laughs> it ain't a petite wrinkle on her. <laughs> so you know, I, I'll make a first pass and maybe. I bet people want to do that. I mean, it is beautiful. Well, you got that big ice field that we're going to cross a, first. Every and then you have glaciers and fjords after that. Um, but the glacier, the glacier field is really, or the ice field is really cool because it's big and flat and there's boulders the size of houses sitting on top of it moving along with it. And when you look at your altimeter, if you're down on the deck, you're still 1,500 feet above the ocean. Yeah, yeah. So that's how much ice is under you. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Flying through the beauty of the Alaskan wilderness, I felt fortunate to be an American and to be with others who had risked their lives in war so we could have the freedom to call upon such an experience. When I think of the young pilots that these men mentored and helped develop skills and the fact that they are now flying the F-22, I remember the words of Ronald Reagan and I think those words still hold true today from january 11th 1989 in his farewell speech he said america still stands strong and and true on the granite ridge and her glow has held steady no matter what storm and she's still a beacon still a magnet for all who must have freedom for all the pilgrims from all the lost places who are hurtling through the darkness toward home We'll be flying up there in spread, and I think we ought to kind of stay in spread. But now I'm going to be turning now, so in spread it's hard to keep sight. Yeah, peak. watch. So there's going to be a point. I'll probably bring you in a little closer so that I mean you can kind of see, but you're going to get yeah, yeah, information. Yeah. Then I'm going to go ahead and take send you to extended trail, and we'll come through the valleys and down the valleys in extended trail. And that's a lot of fun. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. It's pretty common to see men in their mid-70s sitting on rocking chairs in front of nursing homes. It's not so common to see men in their mid-70s finishing up a five-year building project on an extremely sophisticated aircraft 
and leading and planning the execution of a trip such as this with the precision of a combat mission. Flying along with these air warriors and looking down at the Alaskan wilderness and its splendor, I thought of the words of Franklin Roosevelt. The winds that blow through the wide sky in these mountains, the winds that sweep from Canada to Mexico, from the Pacific to the Atlantic, have always blown on free men. So yeah, right through this saddle up here and then there's a pretty good sized valley dropping down in front of us, almost dead ahead, and then we can follow that down. All right, sounds good. This is the playground of the world. We go from flying fast to flying on water in pontoons. Looking forward to a good time. Brian's beautiful J3 club. Going to go fishing. Look at the countryside. Chase some moose. We'll be back a little bit. SX-300 was introduced in 1983 and designed by Ed Swearingen and uh, he designed this airplane for one reason, speed and efficiency. You know, the average build time for a plane like this is three to five years. Noted among our group are four individuals that uh, built their own airplane. First of all, uh, master builder and uh, one who everyone looks up to, Keith Phillips built his SX-300, uh, as well as John Wilson. Additionally, Jerry Mercer and Tony Crawford, they each built their own Quest Air Ventures. And uh, none of this could be possible really without the Experimental Aircraft Association with some 180,000 members worldwide. So when we're doing normal stuff spread out in winter and when we're trying to impress the local the natives, then Jimmy, you come over and slot it. Okay. And when we get up there, we make a, probably a pass across the field. That's just like here, you come to the river. Adventure is worthwhile, and chance is the providence of adventurers, and by chance we ran into all of the great people and friends that we made at a community known as Wolf Lake, Alaska, a group of bush pilots that represented pilots from all over the world, and we truly, truly love our friends at Wolf Lake. Among the great people we met at Wolf Lake there were three that exemplified the spirit of that community and also the spirit that makes America great. On the afternoon of August 1st, 2010, Pilot Wild Bill Mitchell, Co-Pilot John Eshelman, and Loadmaster Paul Courtley departed Wolf Lake Airport in Bill's K-Model C-123. We called her Large March. Their cargo was a 12,000-pound replacement generator for the town of Unilocklet. And departure was uneventful, and the weather was favorable via Windy Pass. Their initial flight into McKinley was uneventful. However, shortly thereafter, a, a catastrophic mechanical event occurred involving the left prop. And despite the tremendous talent in the cockpit and favorable weather, the crew was unable to complete an emergency approach to McKinley Airstrip and went down in a stall on the shoulder of the great Mount McKinley. All souls on board were lost. 
We want to remember these men, for their passion for living to the fullest was great, and they embraced the beauty and wonder of the Alaskan wilderness, and we want to remember them for their love of flight. We always flew in close formation and in proximity of each other so that if one of us were to go down, the other three would devise a plan to hopefully have the persons rescued. Most of the terrain was such that in the event of going down, the chances for being rescued were rather low. Usually at least 100 miles from nowhere and uh, out of communication with the outside world, we only had each other to communicate with. And so following each other and making sure we were all together was always a key thing in our minds. All right, any questions? Yeah, uh, emergency. Somebody, somebody's down. Somebody's down. The most important thing is to get the position. I'm going to try to maintain radio contact as we go. We will stay over target as long as we can until we run out of fuel. And that based on the closest recovery here. All right. High orbit, keep the track and save fuel because we may need you to stay there longer. Uh, the water temperature is around 60 to 65 degrees. As I understand it from the old days, you got about an hour. So you can be recovered in the water. Uh, it's cold. Mm -hmm. Any beaches along the way? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. We, we're going to be very close to the land, and that's kind of where I look at. I'll look for a beach to land on. <clears throat> and if if there's not that, I don't want to run into rocks. Uh, your technique is to find a hill with trees on it, and then fly up and stall out, do a hammer and stall on the trees, which actually is not a bad Thank idea. You. Not no. a hammer and stall. Between two trees. I dare you did that once. It worked out good. Did yeah. you really? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you about that tonight. All right. Okay. <laughs> The group was blessed over the years, never having an accident or a fatality. However, there were times when there were perilous events going on. Such an event was the time that Tuck and I lost our alternator in the middle of a cloud, and we were depending on our wingman to take us home. Uh, Tuck, I got you in sight, Tuck. Just keep coming around. Okay. I have about uh, maybe a half an hour. Okay, Mike, uh, I suggest we carry on to uh, Wolf Lake. Yeah, let's, why don't you guys go do that? Uh, let's split it up and uh, I'll go back with uh, Jerry. Mike, do you have me in sight? Yes, sir, I'm on your left side. Yeah, we can stay straight ahead. Let's go back over to 123.17, Marty. Yeah, we copied that. I've got plenty of gas. So, uh... Um, you just can't talk. Just, uh, pretty soon I won't be able to talk. Yeah, and just, just shut everything off except your comp. That's all I got. I'm gonna need a little power. What else can I turn off here? Get a vacuum gyro, electric gyro. Vacuum. Okay. Yeah, that's work out good here, Tucker. You just uh, don't talk to me. You have transfer to screw up your power source, so I'll just talk to you. Okay. We're 28 minutes out. No need for acknowledgement. Gonna push it up 20 knots. Give me a head nod if that's okay. Oh, jeez. No wonder our mouth flap is open. Power good? Yeah, that's great. Get oh. your circuit breaker, right? Yeah, I won't stay in. It's, it's, uh, the alternator's out. If I lose my radio, I'll set up for a uh, straight end to runway 1-1. One, one, and uh, if you could chase me and take a look at the gear and make sure it's down, then uh, give me a thumbs up if it is, and I'll, we'll go, I'll just land. Got it. All right, starting to fall off a little bit. Okay, Tuck, there's the runway straight ahead, and I'll let you take the lead and you slow. I'll watch your gear. Okay, uh, two's got the lead. Okay, I got three down and locked. Yeah, they look nominal. Hey, the X number two airplane's going around, come back in the ladder runway one one. That was a good job by Jerry. He's good. The goal of each annual journey, which usually began around June 16th and lasted for about 16 days, was to have as much fun as possible. Each day was measured in terms of fun units. There's no better way to see Alaska than low and fast, uh, flying close together in tight formation over the ice. It's just an incredible, incredible experience.
Flying up along the coast of Alaska is just exhilarating, to say the least. Out of communication, away from any other human beings, but every now and then we would run into a non-suspecting ship under us, and we would provide that ship and its lucky passengers that may have been up on the bridge with an incredible air show. I was reminded flying through these majestic mountains of Alaska that uh, especially flying with these great men, some of whom had risked their very lives for our freedom that America was not built on fear. America was built on courage, on imagination, and unbeatable determination to do the job at hand. We just flew up here to McCarthy, and it's 4th of July. And we're going to be going to a parade here in a few minutes. Tuck, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. Hey, hey. Many more. Well, I don't know how you have more fun than that. What a great trip to Alaska. Uh, nothing like cruising up and down the glaciers in Alaska, and especially with the group, like the group we had, that was fantastic. But all good things come to an end, and so here I am back in Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, well, let's take a little flight around here, see what that's like. The sky is fine. <laughs> what can I say? Isn't this great? This is a privilege. A privilege to live in America. You know, one of the best things about uh, this group we have is how well we uh, fly together. Not everybody's for the military, but they've learned the disciplines of formation flight. And uh, they do a really good job. No matter where we go, everybody helps each other. I had some airplane problems, and rather than go out and fly on their own, they took the time out to help me fix my airplane so we could all go together. Ah, those, are, those are the kind of people I love. Great brotherhood. People who fly airplanes, there's nothing like it. I don't know what else I would rather do than this. And we're free, we're free to pursue happiness as we see it, and not somebody else. Worth fighting for, and dying for. I fought, some of my friends died, but it's worth it. And I'd do it again in a minute if they ever asked. Tuck McAtee graduated from the United States Air Force Academy uh, in the class of 1962 and he went to F-100 training with three of his best friends from the academy who all became roommates. Unfortunately, one of his roommates died in an accident before training was complete and the other two had perished in Vietnam within six weeks of having arrived. Tuck was asked by the Air Force to go back to the United States and serve as ambassador to the families of his fallen classmates. He spent about six weeks doing this and then with a resolve went back with grit and determination and flew 265 missions in Vietnam for a total of 465 combat hours, awarded two distinguished flying crosses and 12 air medals. 
The United States has sent many of its fine young men and women into great peril to fight for our freedom beyond our borders. The only amount of land we have ever asked for in return is enough to bury those that did not return. So this film is dedicated to the class of 1962, otherwise very lovingly known as the Red Tag Bastards. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. You can see heroes every day going in and out of factory gates. Others, a handful in number, produce enough food to feed all of us and then the world beyond. There are entrepreneurs with faith in themselves and faith in an idea who create new jobs and opportunity. They're individuals and families whose voluntary gifts support church, charity, culture, art, and education. Their patriotism is quiet but deep. We are Americans.